Hello everybody out there in YouTube land. Welcome to Diego Knows. I'm Diego and today it's time to talk some more about Sex in the City. That's right, Sex in the City, everyone's favorite show about those sluts from New York. Yeah, yeah, as I call them sluts. That's right, I did. Yeah, what are you gonna do about it, huh? <laughs> it's true, it's true. Okay, sorry about that. I'm not trying to offend anybody, uh, but if the shoe fits, right? Okay, <laughs> okay. I'm Diego. I've watched all 94 episodes of Sex and the City, and I've reviewed 92 of them. <laughs> wow, can you believe that? 92 episodes I reviewed already. Damn, I, 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 I couldn't stop. I said, I promised you I was going to review all 92 episodes, and I'm I mean, all 94 episodes of the show, and I'm almost done. Damn it! And then I'm going to review the movies, and then I'm going after your chick flicks. All right. And I was a big fan of Sex and the City. Like I said, I watched the show originally uh, when it first came out because I was a fan. I actually enjoyed the show. I was the only straight guy that I knew at that time. I was a younger man back then. So we're talking about 20 something years ago when the show first came out. Okay. Uh, I was the only guy, a straight guy that I knew that was watching the show on a regular basis. So I knew who was dating who, where everybody was, who had the baby, who didn't, you know, all that. I knew, I knew everything. All right. So I, I was the only one. Okay. And I did it because I wanted to get laid. Okay. Because every hot girl I knew was watching the show and I lived in a big city. I was young. I was single. I was out of the Marines going to college during the day and I was working at night, working in restaurants, bars, nightclubs, you know, that kind of thing. I was in that, I was in that, uh, that industry. Okay. And all the people that I worked with, most of the people I worked with, you know, we're, we're models and actors and comedians and musicians and stuff. So we partied a lot. Okay. We went out a lot, had a lot of fun together. You know, I mean, it was cool. It was, it was a cool time in my life. You know, that, that I, I miss it sometimes, but I'm glad I'm not that young and dumb <laughs> as I was back then. Okay. But I watched the show sex and the city and these women were doing the same thing I was doing. They were just older than me. They were a good 10, 15 years older than I was, but we were doing the same thing they were doing. Okay. Uh, but they had a show about it and we didn't. Okay. So what we got to see here was we got to see a female's version of, of dating in a big city okay because and, and no no doubts about it okay big city the city itself is a character on the show okay all the stuff they get away with all the stuff they do is because they live in a big city they can do this stuff okay there's a lot of things in there that your average person who lives in the midwest would not understand you would have to live in a big city to really appreciate <laughs> of what it's like to live in a big city the things that you do it's different than living out you know in the country okay and i lived in a big city i'm, I'm more comfortable in a big city i always have been okay uh so uh so yeah i like the show a lot you know um the only problem i really have with the show is the way they treated the straight guys these these guys that they had on the show were not real men uh i know these are just actors okay but uh, there was no straight men involved in the creation of the show okay not not at all okay this show was written by gay guys uh lesbians and feminists okay they were represented okay, well maybe Maybe not so much the lesbians, but everyone else was represented, okay, except for the straight guy. There were no real straight men on the show. These were caricatures of men. There was not realistic men. They did things that no normal man, much less a human being, uh, would ever do, okay? Uh, but because they are straight men, you know, and most of the guys were white, uh, they were the butt of every joke, okay? And, and still today, even more so. But back then, oh yeah, they were definitely leading the trail on that, okay? Blazing the trail on that, okay? So basically what the show was doing was legitimizing women sleeping around. Okay, now I know the presupposition here, the predisposition here is that, well, well, men do it too. Okay, well, actually the truth is that most men don't do it. Okay, most men wish they could do it, I'll give you that. But most men do not do it because most men cannot do it. They cannot sleep around like crazy, okay? Because unfortunately for us, okay, uh, what, what women find attractive in a man is not necessarily the same thing as what men find attractive in a woman. Okay, we don't give a fuck whether you went to Harvard or whether you work at Taco Bell. If you look fucking good, we're gonna fuck you. If you look good, we're gonna fuck you. Okay, it has nothing to do with your intelligence. It has nothing to do with your your financial status. Okay, it doesn't even have to, anything to do with whether or not you have kids or not, or whether you're married or not. We don't give a shit. Okay, <laughs> we'll fuck you. All right. <laughs> Women, on the other hand, are a little bit different. Okay, they, they they tend to be more attracted to men with social status. Okay, men with finances, men that can provide. Okay. Um, not every guy can do that, okay? Most guys cannot do that, okay? But most of us, we, we try to do that. We try to give that, okay? But just like, you know, there's always a better looking woman out there, there's always a, a better guy out there for you, okay? So the question is, like, when do you find, when you, have, when you find someone that meets most of your qualifications, do you hold on to it or do you keep looking for something better? Well, these women promoted the idea, okay, that you have to keep, uh, keep looking, keep going for something better, than what you already have. Okay, when you do that, it's fine. You can get away with that when you're young and pretty and all the guys are coming on to you. Okay, like these women are all middle-aged. Okay, come on. Again, they're getting hit on by CEOs of companies, you know, by fucking uh, corporate attorneys, by architects, <laughs> by, <laughs> by music producers. 
Okay, uh, fucking Wall Street, Wall Street investment bankers. I mean, get the fuck out of here. Okay, these are middle-aged women. Now, I'm not saying that this would never. It's impossible that this would happen in real life. I'm saying it's not likely. Okay, the guys like this on the show that you see here, they would go towards the younger women, the younger, more attractive women, because they will more likely do what they say. Okay, whereas you know you get a, an opinionated, you know, like like a Samantha or some shit, they're not gonna put up with that crap. They're not gonna put up with some woman trying to show that her dick's bigger than his. Fuck you, get the fuck out of my life. You know, okay, that's what happened in real life. But that's not what's gonna happen on this show. No, on this show she's empowered, and men are just afraid of her. No, men just don't want to deal with her. Okay, why would deal with her when they can get a prettier, hotter, hotter girl that fucking actually wants to please him? Okay, <laughs> why? <laughs> Why put up with like a Samantha when you can have that, you know? Exactly, okay? And that's more realistic. This show's not going to go there. This show will not show you that, okay? And that's why this show does not tell you the whole truth. That's what I do. I'm here to tell you the truth. I'm going to give you a straight man's point of view. I'm going to tell you the honest God truth about these situations, these relationships, okay? Uh, what would realistically happen from a straight man's point of view? Because that's the point of view you never got when you watched this show. Okay, no one ever told you the truth. Okay, you, when you, ladies, when you're watching this show, you talk to your girlfriends about it and your gay friends about it. That's what you did. You never talked to us about it. Okay, and, and for good reason. First of all, we didn't give a shit. Okay, <laughs> and second of all, <laughs> because, uh, well, I mean, relationships is the kind of thing you talk to your girlfriends about. You don't necessarily talk to your boyfriends or your husbands about that shit unless, unless you know, there's already a fight going on. Okay, and this show promoted that too. Uh, the show was all about how the, the, the most honest, the most truest, the most faithful, uh, the strongest relationships that you can have with another human being are with your girlfriends, okay? <laughs> not, not with your spouses, not with your boyfriends, not with your kids, okay? Not with your parents, <laughs> no. With your girlfriends. <laughs> They're the ones that will always be there for you, no matter what. Yeah, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. It's just not realistic. It's not realistic at all. Okay, uh, but that's what the show gave you. Okay, so I'm here to fucking pop a uh, pop a you know pin put a needle in the balloon and blow up all this bullshit. Okay, I'm gonna tell you the truth. Straight man's point of view. If you're easily offended, if you're easily uh, triggered, get the fuck out right now because I'm not gonna censor myself. Okay, the real question you need to ask yourself is, can you handle it? Can you handle it? Because I don't think you can. Honestly, I don't think you can. You can't handle the truth. Well, that's what I'm going to give you, baby. A big dose of truth, straight up with no lube. That's right, no lube. Okay, so you better be ready. This is your warning. This is your only warning. This is your only warning. Okay, I'm going to go deep into the depths. And let's see if you can come. I know I'm coming out alive. Let's see if you can come out alive. All right? Uh, guys, don't watch this with your girlfriend or your wife. Don't watch this with her, okay? Don't. Trust me on this. Don't. Watch this by yourself. Ladies, don't watch this with him either, okay? Don't, because I'm just going to embarrass the fuck out of him. And then he's going to have to make an excuse to leave the room or, you know, you know I don't want to start no fights or no shit, okay? I'm telling you the truth, okay? Straight man's point of view, all right? I've already gone, I've already done 92 episodes, so I might as well just finish and go on 94. So here we go. Now, I want to take my time with these reviews because uh, these are the last two episodes of the show. There's a lot going on here. Uh, this season, by this time, the show was such a hit on HBO. Everybody, it was in the cultural zeitgeist. Every fucking white, straight white girl and straight teenage white girl was watching this show. Okay, a lot of product placement. There were a lot of companies that were giving money to HBO to have their products displayed on the show. Okay, or their industries like McDonald's was giving them money. I mean, when McDonald's is giving you money for your show, you know your show's a fucking hit. Okay, <laughs> so Manolo Blahniks, Barney's, you know, um, Prada, all, all these fucking companies were just throwing money at the producers of the show. Okay, uh, so, so that their stuff could be, so that the women could be shown wearing their stuff, you know, it's just insane, you know, uh, Oscar de la Renta, all that kind of shit, all right, so uh, yeah, so there was a lot of that going on, uh, and it was in your face, but it, it kind of felt like watching the Truman Show, that movie, you know, where like, it's supposed to be real life, but they stopped to do a product placement, you know, <laughs> that's kind of what it's like, because the show's a big hit, they already know they got a lot of followers, uh, they got HBO is doing really good right now because all the men were watching Sopranos and all the women were watching this. Okay, so it was a big, huge hit. But they they couldn't put it, they couldn't keep doing it anymore. Like I said, in my last video. Once the women get married and settle down and start having kids, I mean, there's, there's no more Sex in the City. It's over. Okay, and these women are not getting younger. It's kind of the older they get and the more they start riding the cock carousel, the older they get, the more. Well, I'm sorry, but it's pathetic. It's pathetic. It is. Okay, you ladies, you've all seen TV shows. Or movies or stuff where there's like a guy who's like 45 years old, 
okay, in a leather jacket and tight ripped jeans and he's trying to hit on some fucking 20 year old women. Isn't it kind of pathetic? You know, he's got the gray hair and the wrinkles and all that and he's trying to act like he's 19. Yeah, it's pretty fucking pathetic, right? Okay, well, how do you think it looks when women do it? Exactly, exactly. So it's like, come on, you know, you're gonna have to settle down eventually, all right? I mean, you're, you already missed your window to have kids. Okay, so like, you know, so, so that right there, you've already lost a big demographic of men uh, that will wife you up. Okay, so like, you know, you know, I mean, it, it's a smaller pool. Like Candace, like Candace Bergen said, it's a smaller dating pool the older you get. It is, I'm sorry. It is. Okay, the, the men, the high value men that you want, they, they're going to want the younger, more attractive women. They don't give a shit about your fucking feminism or your goddamn fucking, you know, your money or that kind of shit. Why? Who gives a fuck? Okay, a real man can provide for himself. He doesn't need your fucking, uh, he doesn't need your fucking law degree or your fucking, or your Ivy League diploma to impress him. <laughs> you got big titties. I'm sorry, but that's what it comes down to, okay? <laughs> sorry. Hey, straight man's point of view, all right? Now, if you, want to, if you want to be successful in your business, your profession, by all means, do it. Do it, okay? But you got to remember, when, when you're, if you're a woman... And you're focusing all your life on your career, trying to make it in your industry, okay? If you're successful, you know, if you make it there, if you work hard enough and you do happen to make it there, good for you. All I'm, there's nothing wrong with that. By all means, that's what you want to do. Go do it. If that's the most important thing in your life, go fucking do it. Pursue it. Make something yourself. Make your mark. Change the world. Make it a better place. Absolutely, okay? But that doesn't necessarily translate into getting laid. That doesn't translate into getting relationships, okay? Because most women want to be with a man that can provide more than they can. Okay, you, you almost never see women dating down. They always date up. So if you're a female and you're a millionaire already, you're going to date another millionaire, a multimillionaire. You're not going to date a guy that's making $60,000 a year. You know? Now, hey, I love Joe Millionaire. It's a great show, but come on, it's bullshit, right? You're, you're probably not going to date a guy, okay? You know, some people are like, I don't care about the money. Well, it, it's, it's not true. It's not true. Because what if something happens to you? Okay, can this guy support you? No, he can't. Okay, he can't. All right? Now, on this show, you've got an example of fucking like, like Samantha, who obviously makes a lot more money than, than Smith and Jared. But I, I guarantee you, this is realistically, when Smith and Jared, once Smith and Jared gets a contract in Hollywood, fuck you, Samantha. <laughs> I'm out of there. I'm going to go date Angelina Jolie now. Fuck you. That's what, what would have happened in real life, okay? She got him to a place, and now he can fucking let her go. In the meantime, you know, yeah, he's going to fucking mooch off of her. Absolutely. She's more successful than he is, okay? It's all about monkey branching. That's what it is, okay? Uh, but anyway... Let's get to the episode, all right? So basically, I'm going to give you my anecdotes. I'm going to tell you a straight man's point of view on all the aspects of the show, okay? So it's going to be a few up. It's going to be a few um, a few videos I'm going to have to do to get through this episode and then the next one, okay? Because that's going to be the end of the show. And I don't want to leave anything out. I don't want to, like, remember something six months later and then have to put it back in here. You know, I don't want to do that. So I want to get it all out of there right now, okay? So right now, the episode that we're talking about today is uh, Season 6, Episode 19. Season 6, Episode 19. This is Part 1 of Season 6, Episode 19. Okay, part unun, part un. Okay, the name of this episode is called An American Girl in Paris. An American Girl in Paris, part un. Okay, that's French for those of you who don't know. All right, uh, yeah, yeah, of course you knew that, yeah. Okay, now, um, this episode starts off with Carrie. Carrie's very excited. Her and her boyfriend, she decided last episode that she's going to move to Paris to uh, be with her boyfriend. Alexander Petrovsky, uh, the mad Russian, uh, the fucking pinko communist bastard artist. Now, we don't know what kind of art he does. We've never seen his artwork. Okay. Um, he, uh, he's actually really a ballet dancer, but he's playing an artist on the show. <laughs> he's a ballet dancer in real life. Yes, Mikhail Bryshnikov. Yeah, White Knights, baby. Remember? Yeah, remember that? Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, um, so she's dating him, and he's moving to Paris. He's tired of the United States. He's tired of New York. Uh, he wants to go back to Paris. That's his favorite city. It's the greatest city in the world. That's what he said at the dinner party he, he hosted where everyone showed up. And uh, he asked Carrie to, to join him in Paris. But if, if Carrie moves to Paris, she's going to give up her job. And more importantly, she's going to give up her friends. Okay. Uh, uh, Charlotte's happy for her. Samantha's happy for her. Miranda is not happy for her. She does not want her to go. She thinks she's making a mistake. She told her straight out, you're living in a fantasy world. Okay. You're living his life, not your own. Okay. Your job. You know, your column that you write, your Sex and City column. That's who you are. Okay. And you do that in New York. That New York is who you are. She's like, no, it's not who I am. It's what I do. Okay. And it doesn't matter. You don't like him. Just say you don't like him, okay? But I'm. But then you don't have to date him. You don't have to move to Paris with him. I want to move to Paris with him. You've already married and settled down and have a kid. Samantha's already fucking uh, got a boyfriend now. You know, um, Charlotte's already married and settled down and trying to have a kid. And it looks like she's gonna have to adopt. But fine, she's gonna have her own family. What do I got? I got nothing. I got him. That's it. 
I got him and I got my fucking job, okay? Meanwhile, all my friends are moving on with their lives and, I, and I'm staying still doing the same fucking thing I was doing six years ago when the show first started, okay? <laughs> I'm still out there riding the cock carousel, writing about how fucking dating life sucks. <laughs> and not moving on with my life. <clears throat> so I see Carrie's point of view and I, and I get it. I, I, I see Carrie's point of view. She wants something different. Everyone else is changing except for her. She's staying the same, and goddamn, she don't want to stay the same anymore. She wants she wants a, a big major change. This is her opportunity to go to Europe, even though she don't really speak French, and, and have some adventures over there with this fucking Russian guy who's fucked every supermodel uh, in Studio 54 back in the 1970s. Okay, so yeah, this is her chance to get out, you know, live a different type of life. You know, uh, I don't think she thought it through very well, you know. But when does she ever think anything through? You know, she just does what she feels like. Like most women, they don't they don't really think about what they're doing. They just do it when it, if it feels good, do it. Okay, not all things, obviously. And I'm not trying to be sexist or nothing because men do this too. Okay, but women tend to be more emotional. You know, if it feels right, they'll do it, whether it's right or not. Men, we tend to be more um, logical. Okay, even if it feels good, if, if we know it's wrong, we'll tend not to do it. Okay, not all the time, but we'll tend. We'll at least we'll, we'll at least know it's wrong, and then do it anyway. Okay, <laughs> knowing that it's wrong, where women will tend to just go with their feelings. Oh, it felt right, so it is right. You see what I mean? Okay, uh, so, <laughs> yeah. Ooh, straight man's point of view, right? Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. You've been there. Okay, so she, uh, she decides she's gonna move to Paris. Okay, so that's it. So she's already packing her stuff, and she's all, she's all excited. She's got this stupid-ass outfit on. It actually looks nice that she's got this big blue bonnet on her chest, which just looks dumb. Her, her, her Carrie's fashion choices are disgusting. I mean, she, I mean, she's been she's been outfitted by fucking Bozo the Clown uh, half the time. She looks fucking ridiculous. I would never be. And, and the show knows that she looks ridiculous. You know how I know? Okay, because every time Carrie is wearing a ridiculous outfit, she's either out with her friends or she's by herself walking down the street in a fucking ridiculous, stupid piece of shit outfit. Okay, and I don't even know anything about women's fashion. Okay, I just know what looks good and what doesn't look good. Okay, but when she's on a date with a man, she always looks good. When she's out going, you know, going to nightclubs with her girlfriends, she looks good. But when she's just walking around New York by herself, you know, daydreaming or whatever, she's always dressed like a fucking uh, bozo the fucking clown. Like Pennywise the fucking clown. All the fucking time. You don't believe me? Check. Double check all the scenes where she looks stupid. Exactly. She's by herself. Exactly. Okay. Now, moving right along. So she's got the stupid ass outfit on. And she's excited. She's packing all of her stuff to, to go to fucking Paris. Okay. Now she listens to her messages in her apartment. Okay. And there's messages in there from Big. That's right. Big. Now he's been trying to get a hold of her. He's been leaving her messages, but she's been spending a lot of time at her boyfriend Alexander's place because his place is a hell of a lot nicer than hers. Okay. I mean, she, she doesn't even have a dining room. Okay. And she's got fucking rats. She's got mice in her fucking apartment. Okay. She probably always did, but okay. <laughs> So yeah, so she's listening to his messages, you know, and he wants to see her again and she's been ignoring him. She last time she heard his messages, she deleted all of them and she told the other girls like, "Hey, what's the point? You know, he's 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 a he's a he's a nothing now. Big is nothing now. He was the guy that never wanted to commit. He never wanted to get serious about us, you know. So fuck him. You know, uh, I can't really be his friend anymore because I have when I'm around him, I start having feelings for him and I don't want that. That's going to fuck up my shit. That's what ruined one of her relationships. It did. It ruined her, her relationship with Aiden. Aiden was the most perfect guy for her. He was faithful. He was loyal. He was funny. He, he was unselfish. He had his own business. You know, he was very creative. You know, um, he could make furniture. You know, he was just, you know, he was the guy that you wanted around. He's the guy that could fucking, you know, install the drywall in your house. He could remodel. He could do your, he did her floors, you know. And what did she do? She cheated on him. Over and over again, okay? <laughs> and, then, and then he took her back. He forgave her because he's one of those, okay? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, I would like to say that no, guys won't do that, okay? Um, but unfortunately, today in 2022, yeah. I think when that, that episode first aired in 2002, I think there would have been less guys that would have forgiven her and taken her back. Okay, a lot less. But now that it's 2022 and there's this whole new generation of, of boys that have been raised by single moms. Okay, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, they will, they will. There's a lot of guys out there that will take a woman back uh, for cheating on him, um, knowing in the back of their head that they'll, she'll probably do it again. But you know what the fuck, right? That's feminism for you, okay? Um, you know, I mean, all the TV shows promote it, right? Uh, you know, it's always about the, what the woman wants, <clears throat> and the woman wants to fuck other guys. Then I have to let her. I have to let her. Because I love her that much. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, guys who I'm like this. So I'm talking about ladies. You know, plenty of guys that are like this, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, yes. <clears throat> Okay, but anyway, uh, so the reason I bring up all this stuff is that because he's always been the guy in the background. Okay, no matter how many guys she dated, no matter who she fucked, Big was always there in the background. And now he's trying to reconnect with her. Now, the last time he was in town, he had to have heart surgery. Okay, he had a, like some kind of angi an anginoplasty surgery. They had to, basically they had to clear out his arteries, okay, or something because uh, he has hereditary heart problems. All right, so he couldn't fuck when he was in town. Uh, and he couldn't really get too excited or anything like that. So basically, Carrie had to act like his nurse in, in, in a little bit of a, of a way, you know. And uh, he uh, he got scared uh, because he's he's in his 40s now, you know. And like I said, he just had heart surgery. Okay, so he's starting to face his own mortality. He's starting to face the, the idea that he's got less days ahead of him than he does behind him. Okay, and what did it all mean? Yeah, I mean, he already came from a rich family. He already makes, we don't know what he does for a living. Uh, we don't even know his real name yet. <laughs> but, uh, you know... But he makes a lot of money. He worked worked in Wall Street, and now he owns his own vineyard. He has his own uh, wine company. He makes his own wine and sells it. Okay, and um, he's he's well off. He's rich. Okay, but what has he got to show for it? He's got he's got two divorce. He's been divorced twice. Okay, he's got no kids. Okay, and uh, you know, with Carrie he had fun, but you know he he could never really bring himself to commit to her. You know. Uh, and a, lot, a lot of it is his own fault, you know, like she was throwing herself out there. But of course, you know, Carrie, I can understand why he wouldn't commit to Carrie per se, because she's a fucking, she's a basket case. She's so fucking neurotic, always questioning everything, always unsure of where the relationship is going. always wondering if, you know, basically doing all the fucking shit that she can uh, to kind of like get this guy to fucking, you know, just, just, you know, Pledge his allegiance to her completely, okay? But Big was didn't want to run that fast, okay? But Carrie did, okay? And that's what caused him to break up the first time. The second time, you know, he got offered a job. Well, he wasn't sure if he was going to have to live in, in Paris or not, you know, for his business. And he, uh, you know, he didn't tell her that, that, you know, I might have to stay in Paris and not just go there. To, I might have to move there, you know? And she was like, what the hell? You didn't talk to me. And I'm your girlfriend. You to you. So, you know, she threw some fucking McDonald's at him. They broke up again. And then they decided to, to uh, that they would still fuck each other, uh, even though he was married and, and she had a, a boyfriend that lived with her. Okay, <laughs> yeah, and then and then that blew up. Okay, because <laughs> they got busted, <laughs> and they both lost their partners. You know, um, you know. So yeah, so like like they've had very up and down relationship. They tried being friends. Uh, but that didn't work out very well either because, you know, Carrie was like picking up guys when they were on a friendship date. <laughs> she would like hit on other guys, you know, and then he would bring other girls. <laughs> so like, yes, yeah, so that didn't work out too well either. <laughs> but anyway, so Big, Big is trying to reconnect with her again. Um, he was scared last time when he came in for his heart surgery and uh, he broke down for one night. He broke down. Like, what are we doing, Carrie? Why are we wasting our lives? Why aren't we just together? You know, we're not getting younger. And she's like, I don't know. I don't know why we're not. You know, she, so basically she wants him to take the lead. You know, she, Carrie wants him to be the man and be like, we're not together because you don't want us to be together. Okay, I need you to tell me that we should be together and quit asking me, you know, stupid questions like, why aren't we together? We know, you know why we're not together. Because you didn't ask me to be with you. That's why we're not together. Okay, you know, because you're not sure if you want to be with me. Okay, and that, that's the honest got truth, okay? And he got scared, and so he kind of broke down a minute of that. But the next day, he woke up, and he got cold again. And Carrie decided that, okay, he's not worth it because, you know, once, he, once he's, you know, back to thinking normally, he's back to where he was. He's closed. He's guarded, you know? And these are actually very masculine traits, okay? And, and I'm impressed that they allowed to have a character like this on the show because Big is actually displaying true masculinity here, okay? He's not putting all of his cards on the table, Okay, he doesn't just fucking meet a girl and then fall in love with her overnight and start fucking professing his love to her. He was fucking taking his time with it. He didn't want to move that fast. Carrie was the one that wanted to move fast. Okay, he didn't want to move fast. He'd already been married before. Okay, he didn't want to fucking go that fast straight back to that again. Okay, he wanted to take his time with it. Okay, and he wasn't really sure. You know, he was younger when he first appeared. He was like, what, 40 years old or something, right? Well, now he's like 46, 47. Okay, so he's like, okay, man, you know. Dating the hot young girls, those, those days are probably behind me, unless I pay for it. You know, those days are probably behind me, <laughs> okay? So, who do I want to be around? Who do I have a good sex life with? Who makes me laugh, especially when we're not having sex? Who, and the only one you can think about is Carrie. Carrie. Carrie was always there to talk to him, to listen to him, uh, you know, to make jokes with him. You know, I mean, yeah, he paid for all the fucking expensive dates and the wine and all that kind of shit and the vacations and the hotels. You know, he paid for everything, okay? But he liked being around her. Even when they weren't having sex, he liked being around her. And that's what separated her 
from the other women that he could have gotten because he's a high value, sexually market valued man. Lots of women will compete for him. He's single, he's good looking, he's cultured, okay, he's rich, okay, he's got social status. Christ, he's got his own fucking vineyard. He makes his own fucking alcohol for Christ's sake, okay? He's dated movie stars, okay? He's dated supermodels, okay? This guy is, 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 is the, the .000001% of, uh, of men you know, that women want to be with, and he's got no fucking kids. What the hell, dude? This guy's, this guy's the bomb, all right? Um, lots of women would go after a guy like this, okay? But now he's getting older, okay? And he's like, you know what? Well, what do I, you know, who, I, who's just going to make me laugh? Who can make me laugh? And ladies, let me tell you something. I'm, I'm going to part with a real deep, dark secret here, okay? That's something no man's going to tell you this, okay? But I'm going to tell you this true, okay? If you really want to win a man over, you have to provide something that every other woman can't provide, okay? It's just like, it's just like what you want in a man. You gotta be like, a man have to provide a woman with something that she wants that not every man can give her, okay? That's what makes him more valuable. And the same thing goes for you, ladies. I know you don't want, ever wanna go there. You think your pussy's enough, it's not, okay? Your pussy will dry out, it'll age out, and he'll want some better pussy, okay? Sorry, there's gotta be something else there that's gonna make him want to stay with you, okay? Now, for most, for most men, okay, that would be uh, your fidelity, okay? That would be like, okay, well, it's mine. Her pussy's mine. Yes, I've had better pussy and stuff, whatever, but this one belongs to me and she's not gonna share with anyone else, okay? That's what she's doing for me. That's something that I can get, I got from her that I can't get from every other woman. So I'm gonna put a ring on it, okay? That, now, for some guys, that's enough, not today. Okay, not today, because no woman really gives that anymore, all right? Uh, so what, what can you provide him? You know what, there's something that, that a, no woman has ever made me do, okay? Laugh. And now I'm talking about like, like she tripped down the stairs and I get like, no, I'm talking about a woman that made me fucking laugh. Women cannot make men laugh. They can't. I've never even seen a female stand-up comedian that can make me laugh. The only woman that ever made me laugh in my entire life, okay, unless it was like, I'm not talking about like, hey, she tripped or something or, or you know, someone threw a pie in her face or something. She's like, no, I'm, I'm talking, the only woman that ever made me laugh was Lucille Ball on I Love Lucy. Okay, she had me cracking up and she didn't tell jokes. She, it, was all, it was all like clown comedy. It was all body humor. You know, uh, but uh, she made me fucking laugh. You know how rare it is that a woman can make you laugh. I keep thinking about that movie *Cruel Intentions*, where Reese Witherspoon is in the in the convertible in the Porsche with uh, <laughs> with uh, Ryan Phillippe, her soon-to-be husband in real life. Remember? Remember she started making these faces, you know, at him while he was trying to drive, and he started laughing. Okay, that's the honest to God truth. That, that's why he fell in love. That's the moment in the movie where he falls in love with her. I'm gonna have to review this movie. Okay, that's the point in the movie where he falls in love with her is when he made her laugh. No woman made him laugh. Every woman gave her gave him her pussy. Okay, once you've gotten it, it's no big deal anymore. Okay, <laughs> sorry, ladies, but it's true. What else is there about you? Okay, he made her laugh. No woman has ever made him laugh, and that's the truth. Okay, so what does Carrie do for big that no other woman does? Carrie can make him laugh. He can have fun with her. He can joke with her. He can verbally spar with her. Now Jack Berger was better at this, but Jack Berger didn't have enough confidence to pursue the relationship. Okay. But the big, yeah, that's something that she gave him. Okay, so she wasn't the best looking girl he dated. Okay, she wasn't the, you know, the prettiest one. She probably wasn't even the best in sex that he ever had. Okay, but he liked being around her. Even when they weren't fucking, he liked being around her. That's the difference. That's what made him in love with her and want to keep her. Okay, so she sees him. So he sees her. Uh, he's been leaving her messages. She's been blowing him off. She gets dressed. She goes downstairs from her brownstone. And there he is in his car, of course, in his fucking Lincoln Continental. Okay, in the back seat with the window rolled down like, like he always does. Remember, Big never drives anywhere. He gets driven to places, okay? Raul, his chauffeur, drives him everywhere. Okay, I guess he rehired him since he doesn't live in New York anymore. I guess he rehired him. <laughs> it's cold outside. And he's been waiting there for her to come downstairs because she did not call him back. Okay? And uh, he invites her. Hey, hey, kid. You know, and, and she sees him there. And now she's on her way to go meet the girls. They're going to have their final dinner before she flies off. She's going to Paris tonight, later on tonight. Okay, so she wanted to get dressed up uh, to go meet the girls. Okay, and say goodbye to everybody and then get go to the airport. Okay, but then there's Big right there. Okay, okay. Uh, and he invites her inside his, inside his, um, his Lincoln, okay, to talk. Or his limousine, sorry. Okay. And uh, he, he offers to give her a ride, but she just you know, agrees to sit there with him because it's warm, it's cold outside. And he asks the driver, Raul, to go outside so he doesn't listen into their conversation. Uh, Carrie feels bad about that because it's freezing out there. Oh, you should have to go out there. It's freezing out there. He's, oh, we won't be that long, you know. So Big's like, you know, so you don't return my calls, you know. Uh, you know, for, for like, you know, I feel like a needy chick right now, Carrie. 
You know, did I piss you off or something? I mean, uh, I know you freaked out about the last time I was in town. You know, and she's like, oh, it's okay, it's okay. You know, I've been busy with other things. He's like, well, you were, you know, you were so amazing to me when I was here last time. You know, and she's like, you, you know, but you don't have to do this. He's like, no, oh, come on, Carrie, let me finish. Let me finish. Since then, I've been thinking a lot about us. I've been thinking a lot about you. And she's like, uh, you don't have to do this. There's no point. It's fine. I have to go meet the girls. Okay, uh, fine. Then uh, how about dinner tomorrow? And she's like, okay, uh, drinks. All right, Carrie, I'm starting to feel like that uh, needy chick again. And she's like, I won't be here tomorrow. I'm leaving for Paris tonight. Oh, you're finally taking a vacation, huh? No. I'm going with a man I'm in a relationship with. He's wonderful and I'm happy. Please don't feel bad about anything, okay? Now, goodbye, I have to go. And she gets out of the car and, and starts walking away. Well, he gets out of the car too and starts chasing. He's like, Gary, Gary, wait, Gary. Don't go. Gary, stop. What do you mean goodbye? What's this? What's all this about just walking out of my car and walking away from me? It's like, why'd you jump out of the car like that? You know, moving to Paris? I mean, when were you gonna tell me this? She's like, his name is Alexander Petrovsky. Moving to Paris with a Ruski? Okay, and then she walks away when he says that. He's like, oh, come on, it's a joke, Carrie. Carrie, wait, she's like, you do this to me every time. What do you have, like some kind of radar? Carrie might be happy, so it's time to sweep in and shit all over it. No, no, Carrie, I just came to talk. I just wanted to tell you something. I, I made a mistake. You and I, it was, I made a mistake. You and I, you and I nothing. You cannot do this to me again. You cannot chuck me around. Listen, Carrie, it's different now. It's different. It's different this time. It's never different. Six years. I'm never made it different. I'm done. Don't ever call me again. Forget my number. Forget my name. And you can drive down the street all you want, because I don't live here anymore. And she walks away. And he's just stuck there like, hey, <clears throat> you know, I got to say this. And, uh, no, no real defense for Big here. I mean, he did this to himself. The fact that he's so afraid of being alone that he has to resort to seeing his ex-girlfriend who lives 2,000 miles away. And asking her to take him back is pretty fucking pathetic. It's very low value. This is something that low value men do, okay? You have to have, if you're going to be a high value man, you have to have the courage of your convictions, okay? When you break up with someone, you have to know in your mind, in your heart, I'm never getting back with this person no matter what happens. That's why I'm breaking up, okay? There's no chance of me getting back with this person, okay? Uh, he didn't do that, okay? Because he broke up out of fear, the fear to commit, okay? He's living, you gotta remember, he's living in Napa Valley. There's probably not a lot of women around there. It's not the same amount of women as there are in New York. So he didn't have access to as many women, okay? And he's getting older, you know? And so he's probably just done with, with being single. He's done with playing the whole dating thing, you know? How many times can you fucking go on a blind date before it gets frustrating, you know? There's a lot of people out there that you're just not compatible with. I don't wanna say losers, okay? But there's a lot of people out there you're just not compatible with. Men and women, okay? So he's probably, I mean, I mean, who are you gonna meet in fucking Napa Valley that isn't old or already married and have kids, okay? He doesn't want some single mom. He doesn't want some fucking old woman, you know? Uh, he, he would want someone who's pretty and available, you know, and someone that can engage him, you know, stimulate him intellectually. And there's really probably no women like that around in Napa Valley, okay? Or like not very many, and the ones that there are already go taken. So what he's gonna do? Who was the one that he felt good with? Carrie. And I think maybe in the back of his mind, he knows that Carrie, uh, it, it does not have as much of a high sexual market value as he does. 
So he's probably better than whatever guy she's dating right now, okay, is what I'm trying to say. All right? And he probably is aware of that. You know, that there's not very many guys like him that would be attracted to Carrie if this was realistic. But it's not realistic. This show is written by gay guys, right? So in gay guy lollipop land, which is what the show takes place in, okay, yes, only high value men, only multi-millionaire famous Russian artists slash ballet dancers, okay, fall in love with Carrie Bradshaw, okay? <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> so just go with it. Just just go with it, okay? So yeah, so she speeds away from him and he's kind of like, you know, left there, you know, just, you know, lost, lost in himself, okay? It's, I expected more from Big, okay? Big has always been, to me, a very masculine guy. He's a very charming guy with a lot of self-confidence, okay? And for him to break down like this, you know, to lose his confidence, you know, to break down and try to, you know, try to win over his old girlfriend back. It just is, it's, it's very beta male behavior. And I kind of don't appreciate it. I know why they did it. They did it because, let's face it, on this show, okay, uh, who, who, is, who is the fan favorite? Who is the one that the audience really, really liked Carrie with? And that would be Big. Okay, Big. There's been so much invest. Carrie's already invested so much in Big. He's shown up in, in at least one episode in every season. What other guy on this show has done that? has shown up in at least one episode in every other than fucking like Stanford, okay? What guy has ever has shown up in every single episode? Oh, not every, but every season. At least one episode in every single season, okay? It's been big. He's the only one, okay? Remember, a skipper only, only appeared in the first two seasons, okay? Stanford, you know, well, he, I say without Stanford, Anthony's only only showed up in season three for the first time. So, yeah, it's it's been him. It's been big, okay? So he has an impact on Carrie's life, and I think the fans really liked him. Uh, they They liked him. And they wanted to see Carrie with him, you know, because we've already seen Carrie with him. We've seen their banter. We've seen their chemistry, okay? Uh, Petrovsky, Alexander is a new guy, okay? Just like, um, you know, just like Berger was a new guy for a while. Just like Aiden was a new guy twice. But Big, we, he's been there since day one. We already know what they're like together, okay? <laughs> Sometimes familiarity, you tend to go towards familiarity, okay? We already know what Carrie's like with Big. Other than him not being able to make a commitment, I mean, what else is there wrong with their relationship. That's it. That's the only thing. Carrie's all in when it comes to Big. She's always been all in with him, you know? Yeah, exactly. But we'll get back to that later. Okay, so that's going to end uh, this this part of the review. I know I only got to the beginning, but there's a lot to say about Big here, okay? Big is one of my favorite characters on the show, and he's a guy. I can talk about guys, all right? Because <laughs> I'm one, all right? So yes, uh, so that, I'm just going to end part one of this review. I'll be back soon with part two. Thank you for watching this long, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.